Hello and welcome to another look at Nuclear Craft. Uh, today we're looking at uh, 0.0.1.4. Um, it's the first update, update in quite a while, but um, the video uh, is coming out now, which is actually quite soon after the last version's video because I just hadn't done it. Um, so yeah, 0.0.1.4. In this version, um, a lot of work basically went into the fusion reactors. Uh, and we're probably going to have two videos, we're probably going to have this one, which is just the general update. Uh, I'm going to just go through the changelog as, as per usual, and just sort of show basically what's been added. And I'll probably make another video uh, specifically about the more advanced sort of way the fusion reactor now runs, because as I might have mentioned in the past, it is um, quite complicated. Um, so yes, we're going to have a look at that uh, in another episode. But for now, we're just going to have a general look at the mod and how it's, uh, how it's been updated. So let's get started. So we'll start with, um, obviously, the fusion reactor, uh, which is sort of the major uh, update. Uh, the fusion reactor has changed quite significantly. Um, I've still got this old fusion reactor. If you have um, them lying about in your old world, they will just update as per usual. Uh, they'll just update normally. Uh, these five slots, just to get off straight away, don't do anything at the moment. Um, in fact, uh, the, this has actually changed to six slots uh, in, as of 0.0.1.5. Um, but in 0.0.1.4, they don't do anything. They, you can't put stuff in them, or maybe you can put, no, you can't, you can't even put stuff in them, they don't do anything, um, so don't even worry about them, maybe you can shift click stuff into them, no, you can't, but yeah, they don't do anything at the moment, they might do something, or in fact they will do something in the next update. Um, another thing also is that uh, there's this thing called heat variable here, that's not actually meant to be there, I forgot to get rid of that, I was just left that while, while testing, um, this is actually meant to be an, a double, like a sort of decimal number with loads of decimal places, but for some reason it only puts out uh, a number 0, 0.0. So this is basically a bit broken and I'm going to get rid of it. it. It was meant to be for testing anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, this is the new GUI. You can see there's a few more bars now, uh, and you can see that um, the inputs are still the same though. So yeah, let's let's just go through what's, what's going on. So the Fusion Reactor, you can't just run it straight away anymore. So uh, throughout this spotlight, I'm going to just use the standard deuterium-tritium reaction because it's the one which is basically uh, the quickest to set up, and it's just the one that everyone sort of knows about, if you, if you learn about nuclear fusion. It's the, mo it's the one that uh, requires the lowest sort of temperatures to be efficient, so that's why I'm going to use it. It'll just be quickest to show sort of how efficiency and temperature work. Um, so, uh, we can see in here that nothing's happening. Before, you just put the fuels in, and it would just start running. But... The uh, the reactor is is, is far too far too cold. Uh, it needs to the temperature needs to increase. In fact, fusion uh, happens at millions of degrees uh, centigrade or millions of kelvin and tens of millions of kelvin in some cases. Um, in fact, thousands of millions of kelvin. Uh, so uh, we're basically going to have to uh, warm this fusion reactor up. How are we going to do that? Well, obviously with a bit of RF. I've got a resonant energy cell here with a bit of power in it or quite a lot of power. Um, so it's going to start um, feeding out through these cables into the fusion reactor and once I join this and before um, it gets to 8 mega Kelvin it will accept energy uh, so it'll start accepting energy and you can see that it's using energy it's using it up all the energy I give it and it's going to start um, increasing the temperature inside of the reactor yes there we go so it's going now um, it actually takes a little while to uh, heat up uh, because as well as it also heating up, um, while it actually has a temperature, it will also cool down just passively as well. So the higher the temperature, um, the faster it will actually just cool down anyway. Uh, but we've got to wait until we get to 8. Um, in the meantime, I will just explain some other things. So, the, uh, so the, uh, these are just the same, the levels, uh, RF per tick is the same. Reactor size, the reactor size um, thing has now changed. The reactor size can now be um, indefinite. You can just make it as tall as you want. Um, so... Uh, this is a that was a bug before because you could literally just have um, if you had a stack of nine uh, reactor cells, uh, then the top one would link to only the seven below it. So you'd effectively have two separate um, size eight reactors instead of one big size nine. But that's been changed now so that reactors are any size. So you can see we've got a reactor size fourteen, um, reactor size six, fifteen. So this is a huge reactor now. You can make them as big as you want. Um, and obviously the bigger they are, then the quicker they use up their fuel, but the more uh, power they generate. Um, the other thing that happens is that, so then we've got efficiency. Uh, efficiency is basically um, the percentage of the total uh, power that can be produced, that is being produced. So if efficiency is 10%, then it means um, 
the power being produced at the moment is 10% of what can be produced. It's a little bit different to that, um, but it's, it's basically that. If efficiency is 100%, then you're getting the maximum amount of power being produced. Uh, temperature is obviously the temperature, um, and the temperature um, governs the efficiency. Uh, and different uh, fuel combinations will have different temperatures at which the efficiency is 100%. Uh, the heat variable, as I said, is just a number which is used in the, uh, in the calculations, and it shouldn't really be there. Um, I accidentally just left it in. Um, okay, so is this nearly? Oh, we've run out of power, which is probably why. Um, as you can see, it does use up quite a lot of power trying to fuel this thing up. So we're nearly there at eight megakelvin, and once we get there, the reactor will turn from an energy acceptor to an energy creator, and you can see all the energy flows back out, and we're now creating RF. So uh, the efficiency is still 0%, but it's basically um, maybe 0.5% or whatever. And you can see that as the temperature increases, the um, RF per tick is increasing as well. And you can see that it's doing that very, very quickly. Um, the temperature will rise quicker when the efficiency is low. So as you get closer and closer to 100% efficiency, the temperature will rise slower and slower. And you can also see that our deuterium and tritium levels are um, also uh, starting to fall now because we're actually using them up in the reaction. The efficiency has just reached 1%. And this will slowly climb as the temperature increases. Um, I think the um, temperature for maximum efficiency for uh, deuterium and tritium is around 800 megakelvin. I'm pretty sure it's around 800. Um, so you can see as we get close to that, the efficiency will rise to 100%. Once you go past the maximum efficiency and the temperature continues to increase, the efficiency will actually drop again. And um, luckily, though, uh, to control uh, the uh, temperature, you can actually turn off the reactor with a redstone signal. And the redstone signal is um, attached to the main reactor block in the bottom middle of the reactor. So you can only attach redstone to the bottom middle. And you can do that with a series of uh, redstone torches, Atara redstone torches. So uh, as you can see, the, uh, we've wasted a little bit. And you can see now the efficiency is at 18%. And we're now generating around uh, 30,000 RF per tick. It's pretty good. Um, you can actually see we run out of energy storage space. So let's uh, actually uh, try and uh, make a bit more space by uh, doing this. And uh, going like this. So you can see we're now creating 35,000 RF per tick. The efficiency is going up as the temperature increases. And you can see as the temperature, as the efficiency is increasing, the uh, rate of temperature increase is decreasing. But also uh, the rate at which temperature is lost just passively is also increasing as the temperature increases as well. Um, as you can see, this heat variable has also changed as well because we're using this fuel combination. But as I said, don't worry too much about that. Um, we'll get to that in the advanced uh, fusion spotlight. That's pretty much what's going on. Uh, so basically, uh, you want to, in, sim in, in short, you want to put in your fuels, your fuel combination, feed enough energy so you get to uh, 8 megakelvin, and then your temperature will slowly rise. Keep an eye on the efficiency, and once the efficiency reaches 100%, uh, then you want to maybe set up some sort of redstone circuit, which um, keeps turning on and off the reactor at the right moment, um, to uh, keep the efficiency at around 100%. Um, and I'm sure that would be very possible. I've already done it. Uh, it is possible. Um, I may add something in the future, like an upgrade, which can just say once the efficiency is um, you know, 100% or around 100%, turn the reactor off for a bit or something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I might do something like that in the future. Uh, but as you can see, we're generating so much power that we've filled up another resonant energy cell. Um, so we are creating a lot of power. Once you actually do get... Um, to the stage where uh, the efficiency is getting very high and you have set up the reactor. You can see that even though it takes a lot of power to get it started, you get a huge amount in return, um, which is very, very good. Uh, so you can see we're about 50% efficiency now, and we're creating 70,000 RF per tick. So I think overall um, it produces about 150,000 RF per tick. Um, that's, remember, that's size 15. Um, if the reactor size was, say, only 1, for example, you can see that we're using up tritium and deuterium a lot slower. But you can see now we're only creating 5,000 RF per tick. Um, but the heat and, and efficiency stays the same. So um, if you want your reactor to just run a bit slower, then just make your fusion reactor a bit smaller. Simple. So that's pretty much uh, that. Uh, and I, as I said, we'll go into it in a bit more detail in the, um, in the uh, next spotlight, in the spotlight all about the fusion reactor. Um, the next thing that's added uh, is uh, bronze armor. Bronze armor is just made with uh, bronze uh, in the usual shapes just like the boron armor and iron armor or whatever. 
and it has uh, a bit more durability than iron and it has uh, I think I'm pretty sure it's the same protection as iron as well let me just test that I'm pretty sure it does yep it does same protection as iron seven and a half uh, but I think a little bit more durability um, so that's that and then we've also got um, boiled egg and a boiled egg is just made by uh, smelting an egg cooking an egg you just eat it, and I think it gives uh, three hunger slots, so it's just if you have a load of eggs lying around so that you can eat them. Um, so yeah, that's that's just, I don't know why I did that, I just decided to, thought it would be a good idea. Um, another, and then there's a couple bug fixes. Uh, first of all, there was another issue with the fission fuels data, that's all fixed now, that's fine. Um, I also uh, forgot to make uranium crushable. Uranium can now be crushed uh, in here. I just completely forgot to add it to the uh, list of things that can be crushed, so now you can crush up uranium. Uh, as per usual, and it just crushes into uranium dust. Um, the other thing that I've added or fixed is um, what used to happen is um, uh, whenever you right-clicked on the air with a uh, empty fuel cell or an RTG fuel cell, uh, then it used to crash the game. That's now been fixed. I'm, I, I found out I was just being an idiot in the code. Um, so now that's now fixed. You can now just right-click uh, freely uh, if you really want to. Um, what else? Uh, apparently it says here in the changelog possible other things that I've forgotten. I, I don't think I've forgotten too much. If I have, then uh, then I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about and um, you'll you'll figure it out. So thank you for watching. Next video hopefully coming out today or tomorrow, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.